Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Uh, this is the first video of a series on Django Queue. Django Queue is a scheduler and a task queue for Django. In this series, you'll learn how to use Django Queue in your Django application for queuing long-running tasks. Uh, in this episode, we will see how to prepare your Django project and a bit of theory around synchronous and asynchronous code. Uh, to follow along with the story, you'll need uh, an Heroku account if you want to use the Redis add-on, uh, the Heroku CLI installed on your system, I've got a link in the description, a uh, newer version of Python, ideally 3.7 or 3.6, and get installed on your system. Now let's get to work, we're going to create a new folder for the project and we also need a new Python virtual environment. If you have Python 3.6, well, we'll be fine too. Here I'm using 3.7. Uh, once the environment is ready, don't forget to activate the environment with activate, and then we're going to install Django. Now with Django installed, uh, we can create a new project started from a template. Let me grab the link here. Now, uh, in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, this is a template of mine. Uh, it is a Django custom project. It has support for Heroku and uh, the settings are split uh, for uh, the development and production. I've got a link in the description too if you want to create uh, your own Django uh, template. Uh, let's create this project. So we'll start project. Uh, this time, instead of using the uh, stock Django uh, directory structure, we'll pass this template. I will need also to uh, template out uh, the proc file for Heroku. Uh, later in this series we'll see how to deploy this project too. And here is the name for the project. Here we go. Now um, with the project in place let's install the requirements. Pip install requirements just for development and Let's make the migrations because this uh, Django project uh, has a custom user. Oh, I just forgot to uh, create the environment variables. You can just copy this env.example to the to another file named m.emp and if you want to take a look at these environments here at these variables environments uh, time zone e e is just my uh, time zone here in uh, Europe uh, you can of course change the secret key uh, to another one uh, you can also change the uh, admin URL in production I like to uh, randomize this URL now uh, let's run the migrations again make migration is fine and let's migrate to database here we go and now we're ready to run the server okay we're good to go now uh, before moving to uh, Django queue uh, let's take a look at the problem that this uh, package is going to solve uh, the main the main issue for python and django is that they're synchronous uh, Python, on which Django builds on, is single-threaded by nature. Single-threaded means that the language interpreter can only run your code in sequence. Uh, to demonstrate the problem, uh, we're going to create a new application inside this project. Let's open up this project with PyCharm. And now we're going to create a new Django application. I will, work, I will work from the integrated terminal here, uh, Django admin start up, demo up. Uh, we're going to create a view. This view will return a JSON response. The JSON response is a class 
available in django.http. Okay, this view can be called index and will return a JSON response which takes a Python uh, dictionary. So I can call this JSON payload and I will return just a message to the user hello world the payload needs to be passed inside the class here we go now let's create the URL here I need the path helper from URLS and as usual, let's declare URL patterns. Oh, it's singular URL patterns. Uh, it is list. This path could be just demo app. Uh, it takes the index view that I just created. Okay, next up, I'm going to uh, activate this new application inside the settings. As you can see in my uh, Django project, uh, this is a custom project. Uh, I just splitted the uh, configuration for development, production, and base. Uh, let's activate the new application here. Demo app dot apps dot demo app config. Okay, what I'm missing, oh, let's include the URLs here too, path include here, path will include the URL from my new application. Okay, now let me run this application in a browser. If I go to uh, localhost, I will see this young application. If I go to demo app now, I can see there is no, oh, I missed the slash. I missed the slash here. Okay. Let's, let's try again. Okay. If I go here, I can see hello world in the browser. So uh, there is no delay. As I said, the problem with Python is that it is single threaded. Any line of code will be executed line by line. That means that I can simulate uh, a blocking event in the view with the slip function from the time module, which is a um, uh, built-in module from Python. Now, what do you think it will happen if I uh, put here a slip, a call to slip, let me run again the um, this page in the browser, and as you can see, there is a delay of 10 seconds before the user will see anything in the browser. Can you see the delay? Now, uh, this is a, a contrived example. It is artificial, of course, but in a real application, the black hole happens for a number of reasons. Input, output operations taking too long, network delay, interactions with a file system. Um, so you can see why it's crucial to offload uh, these long running tasks. Let me show you again the delay that the user will see before seeing anything in this application. Can you see the view slips for 10 seconds before returning uh, the um, payload to the user. Now in the next video we'll finally get our runs on Django Q. Uh, you will see how we can offload these tasks to Django Q. See you in the next episode.